How's it going, everyone? Hey, I'm Dan Lomar, uh, well, yeah, safety officer with the Flying 20 Club here in uh, Springfield. And I want to come at you with a quick uh, safety topic, um, something about uh, minimum, designated minimum maneuvering speed. Now, last March at the meeting, I gave a short brief on this, uh, but I think it's a very, very important topic um, because it has to do with um, airspeed awareness is really what it has to do with. It's a very important topic. If you remember back in January, I gave a brief on kind of summarize the accidents in um, 2020, the general aviation accidents in 2020. Um, and uh, out of all the accidents in 2020, 22%, it was the largest category of all accidents, 22% of all accidents had to do with loss of airspeed awareness. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you know, stall spin accidents is essentially what it what it comes down to uh, so designated minimum maneuvering speed set talking setting it talking about it is a way to stay out of those types of accidents um, and it's hard to believe too that a hundred percent of those accidents happen in day vfr conditions so how does this happen you know you go out there the weather's good and uh, you wouldn't expect accidents to happen on good weather days but basically uh, it, it has to do with distractions and flying in general is in, uh, is has to do with um, uh, task management and managing distractions as we always say aviate navigate communicate and goes and that goes back to the heart of the message which is above all else fly the airplane don't let all this stuff distract you um, but when we when those things happen and they're going to happen it, it, part of it is managing it and understanding what designated minimum maneuvering speed is helping us manage those distractions. So when I say, and then one of the key things there is designated, means, hey, we're gonna actually set it and mark it on our airspeed indicator. And so I'll talk about that. Um, so that's kind of what we're talking about. So it's, uh, is staying out of these uh, loss of airspeed awareness uh, situations. So let's kind of talk uh, a couple minutes about, you know, how we can get into that situation, uh, how we train stalls, how we recognize stalls and things like that. So first of all, put yourself in the situation where we're up there at altitude practicing stalls. So in the Midwest, uh, say we're 3,000 feet, we're about 2,500 feet over the ground. And we're going to go out there and practice uh, some stalls. And as private pilots, we are taught to recognize, we, we got to know our stall speeds, we're taught to recognize a stall, and we're taught to recover from a stall, how to do all that stuff. And that stuff is awesome. You, 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 can't, you can't learn to fly without that stuff. But let's talk about what that environment looks like when we're learning. Um, we're at altitude, we're 2,500 feet above the ground. So really, we're pretty far up there. We've got plenty of room uh, to lose some altitude. Um, we are, um, uh, there are no distractions going on also. When we're doing the maneuver as practice, it is, it is, it's a dedicated maneuver. Our, our attention is focused on that maneuver and we essentially don't really have any distractions. So those are two really big things that are different from when they really happen. Uh, because when they really happen, we're typically at low altitude and we're typically distracted. So let's put us back out there at 2,500 feet. We slow the airplane down, comes back, power comes back, flaps go down, we slow down, we get the stall warning, we get some buffet, we say, hey, impending stall, then we get the stall, we lower the nose, break the angle of attack, put the power back in and, and raise it back up. And, and everything's great, you know, we learn how to do this, but again, we're at high altitude, we're a higher altitude. Um, and uh, and it's in where we have a focused, um, uh, we're doing it as a focused maneuver. Now let's put ourselves in the low altitude situation. Maybe we're in the pattern, maybe we're doing some sightseeing, uh, maybe we're in the pattern and uh, air traffic control, uh, ATC calls out some traffic for whatever reason, uh, we're we get distracted and we're also at a thousand feet, okay? So let's talk about, we get into that situation um, and uh, we get into a stall situation and we're at a thousand feet. So now the maneuvers, the, the, the procedure to recover is no different. Okay, lower the nose, break the angle of attack, put the power right back in, get it climbing back away, uh, positive rate, uh, all that good stuff. There are really two really, really big things that are different than the way we train it. Uh, first of all, we don't expect it at all. Okay, it's, it's unexpected. Our, our, our task, our attention is not 100% 100 ded 100 dedicated to the maneuver. Uh, we don't expect it. It came from the distraction. And the, the other thing about it too is at low altitude, 
to push that nose forward to break the angle of attack at 1,000 feet versus 2,500 feet, it is an entirely different picture. And it takes every, um, uh, it, it takes every uh, ounce of strength you have to actually push that nose forward because at 1,000 feet, the trees are really big, the bushes are really big, and uh, it's not human nature to want to be able to do that. So the human nature is to hate, keep pulling back, but that's not what we have to do to recover from the stall. So really, so recognize, you know, because we, we ask ourselves, how does a person get into a stall spin accident on a day VFR, on, on, a, on a day VFR situation? Well, put yourself in that situation where you're asking to do this maneuver you've been trained to do, but in an entirely different way of doing it, a different mindset, different altitude, different picture, different distraction. So, you know, that's how we get caught up in these types of scenarios. Um, so let's think about this. Um, as private pilots, again, we're taught to, or we are taught to, we learn how to stall, we learn our stall speeds, we learn how to recognize a stall, we learn how to recover from a stall. As a commercial pilot, we are taught in pending stall. So now we're kind of like, hey, don't go, go, don't go there. But again, we cover at the first sign of stall. And in either one of those situations, it's, it's too late because we're still, even in a pending stall, we're still only 10 knots above the stall speed. Um, so let's talk about the way the airlines do it. And the airlines do what's called this minimum maneuvering speed. So instead of training how to recognize a stall and how to recover from a stall, in the airlines, we use a crew concept and some airspeed markings that say, hey, look, don't go there, okay? Don't, just don't even go there. And so we designate minimum maneuvering speeds that keep us entirely out of this same, uh, out of this situation. And so that's what we can do in general aviation is, is, is designate minimum maneuvering speeds. If we can do the math and figure out what that is, well, that minimum maneuvering speed in the airline is again, it's a 30% safety margin above a stall speed in a 30 degree bank. Um, I talk about how to calculate that, what it is in just a second, but again, um, we're, uh, we recognize it, we honor it, and again, we can mark it on our airspeed indicator. And that's one of the, the big differentiating factors too, is on the airspeed indicator in the airline, whether it be an old round dial uh, where we can set some bugs on the outside or whether it be the newer one with a speed tape, is that minimum maneuvering speed is marked. And so one, we're gonna honor it, we're not gonna go below it, and two, what's there, it raises awareness. It raises a lot of awareness that if we do go below that, we are now eating into our 30% safety margin, okay? So that's one of the big things there too. That's one of the ways in general aviation now we can help manage distractions at low altitude and prioritize flying the airplane when it's the most important. Is so if we have that airspeed indicator, if we have that airspeed marked as a designated minimum maneuvering speed, then it, we can raise some awareness that and tell ourselves, hey, no matter what happens, uh, I am now in the low speed regime uh, to help you recognize that. So I'll talk about what that airspeed is in here in just a second, how to calculate it. Um, and I'm talking about marking airspeed, so let's, th let's talk about that. So general aviation airspeed indicators are marked with green arcs and white arcs. That is great, that really helps us out a lot. But again, I'm talking about actually marking something on the airspeed indicator to kind of give us a little bit higher uh, awareness. Um, Okay, so what is it? How do we calculate what this speed is? We would calculate, calculate the speed based on the flaps up stall speed or the clean maneuvering or the, or the uh, yeah, the clean stall speed of the airplane. And if you do the math, it ends up being 1.404 times the flaps up stall speed. So again, that gives us a 30% buffer and airspeed above a 30, uh, 30 degree bank uh, stall speed. Um, it is not a target speed. It is a it, it, you can look at it as a minimum maneuvering speed. Now the FAA flying handbook references 1.4 times uh, VSO on base, but it doesn't, really it doesn't really talk about it in terms of that being a minimum speed. Uh, good example here, let's talk about the 172. That's what I fly the most, so that's what, uh, what I've, uh, I just happen to have uh, available here. So the flaps up stall speed in the 172 is 57 miles an hour. 30 degree bank clean, uh, 30 degree bank stall speed is 62 miles an hour. If you do the, all the math, um, uh, the designated minimum maneuvering speed that gives us that 30 degree buffer, that 30 uh, 30% buffer in airspeed up above a 30 degree bank uh, stall speed ends up being 80 miles an hour. So. Uh, it's not marked out there right now, but um, uh, just because I, uh, uh, I in that airplane, um, uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm quite well aware of it, but uh, probably not a bad idea to actually mark it with maybe with a blue radial line or something like that. 
Uh, but how do I apply this? So when I'm at low altitude in the pattern, uh, for instance, uh, 80 miles an hour is my minimum maneuvering speed. I'm not gonna go below it, okay, until I am lined up on final and I am stable. So I typically fly about 90 miles an hour on downwind or whatever 2000 RPM gives me with carb heat on. Uh, I'm gonna go 1500 RPM, start to put the flaps out and beam the touchdown point, slow down, and I, I'm gonna fly 80 miles an hour now on that base turn. It is my minimum. Um, uh, once I roll out, because and uh, I'm going to honor 80 because I still have one more turn to make, and that's base of final. And that is one of the most critical turns we can make in general aviation is base of final. So I am definitely going to honor that speed until I am lined up on final. Until after that turn is out of the way and I'm lined up on final stable. Now, once I'm lined up on final stable, I will go ahead and slow down to 70 because I don't expect to be doing any more maneuvering. If I do have to do some maneuvering, whether it be a go around or something like that, hey, I'm gonna increase my airspeed before I really start to do some maneuvering. But stable with flaps out, I'm okay slowing to a, a slower airspeed than that. But again, we're not maneuvering anymore. Um, and then if I gotta go around, then uh, I'm gonna start to bring the flaps up, but I'm not gonna start, I'm not gonna bring the flaps all the way up until I know I'm gonna accelerate through 80 miles an hour. So that's the way I use that speed is that I use it as a minimum speed at low altitude. And, uh, and if I start flying around that speed, I just tell myself, hey, look, um, uh, if, uh, if I get distracted, I really have to pay attention to where that I'm eating into that buffer start, if I start going below that and I'm gonna honor that and get right back, uh, right back to that speed. Um, anyway, so that is, uh, that's the kind of way I implement it. Um, the thing I'll add in there about the Cherokee 6, um, is that, uh, you know, the Cherokee 6, uh, when you look at the manual of the Cherokee 6, it talks, the, it talks, I think it's what, 34, uh, 3,400 pounds. Uh, it gives, always gives the speed references between max weight and reduced weight. And I believe it's between 3,400 pounds and I believe it's 2,900 pounds. Uh, but anyway, there are some speed differences there too. And so, you know, one of the things you might have in an airplane like that where the, the weight range can be a little bit different is you might actually have, um, you know, just be aware that your small speed's gonna, you know, gonna vary six or seven knots depending on the, the weight difference there. So um, I bring a cheat sheet with me when I fly that airplane just so I know, you know, kind of approximately what my weight's gonna be and what my stall speed's gonna be. Um, uh, but so that's just an instance of that. But again, um, not a bad idea to bring your own uh, tape or mark or something like that and just mark your airspeed. And uh, again, uh, you have it there as a visual reference to kind of uh, be aware of what your speed is and we're, when you're getting into the slow speed regime. So, hey, anyway, I hope that helps. It's, I think it's a very, very important topic because, again, uh, we talk about these stall spin accidents, loss of airspeed awareness, and we say to ourselves, how can this possibly happen? But that's why. One, it happens in a different environment. It happens while we're distracted. It happens at low altitude. And even though we know how to cognitively, mentally go through the procedure, recover from a stall, because of the situation is so different, um, uh, you know, just be aware that if you get caught in that situation, uh, things are going to look different than the way they do when you practice those. Um, so, hey, if you got any questions about this stuff, um, uh, be glad to talk about it. And if you got any other topics yeah, you want me to talk about for a safety briefing, something like that, hey, let me know. Uh, anyway, hey, till next time, uh, fly safe out there.